Um, welcome to the Wyoming Goes Global Conference, UW faculty and students developing practical solutions to address international problems. Maybe one of your biggest international problems or problems is you want a job. So these three morning panels are focusing on a variety of, of angles which might surprise you. And so I want you to think about what competencies you have as a student from UW, whether it's international studies, arts and sciences, or whichever college you come from. And that is the way to think about it in terms of when you start approaching uh, the end of your career as a student and move on to either graduate studies or, or as um, going into a career. So this morning, we're starting with alums of the International Studies Program across a variety of decades. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that um, <laughs> because I want them to come back. But I want you also to see that they're talking, they've done a variety of things across their lives, um, including um, things that started out looking very international and maybe looks very different. So um, there are bios available for all of the participants in the conference today. They're available out on the table. Um, so I'm just going to do the briefest of introductions because they're going to talk about what they've been doing. Uh, we're going to go in the order of the program. We're going to start with uh, Terry Kaltenbach, who's had a, a career in insurance, financial advising, nonprofit uh, management. Then we're going to Garrett uh, Schicke, right? All right. <laughs> Monitoring evaluation manager for Lutheran World Relief, only one of the many careers he's had in the last 10 years. Danae Hunzi with the UW Office of International Students and Scholars, and then Janine Jordan, who is currently the city manager of Laramie. So already you can see it's quite a variety, but maybe they can talk about their path to what they're doing today and how the international aspect of their studies here at UW helped them on that path. Terry. Good morning. Can you hear me? OK. Um, Good morning, everyone. I apologize. I uh, came down with a cold last night, and when I get a cold, it goes right to my throat. I mean, anyway, so apologize for the, my voice. It's really great to be back at the University of Wyoming. I have fond memories of being here, and I want to start out by thanking Dr. Gene Garrison for inviting me to come. It's, uh, it's a thrill to be here on the campus. It's amazing how much the campus has changed since I graduated, as, uh, as you'll uh, soon hear back, back in the dark ages. I was born and raised in Buffalo, Wyoming, and I matriculated here at the University of Wyoming in 1962 and graduated with a degree in international affairs, as we call it then, in 1966. Um, memories I have of the school, among other things, was uh, love the, the campus, uh, small class size, great professors, Stanford, Harvard, uh, many other uh, great schools that were our professors. My Russian history class was fascinating. I was fascinated by Peter the Great and, and uh, Catherine, I think we have a guy in, in Russia right now that thinks he's Peter the Great, but that's another story. Uh, anthropology was another favorite of mine. There was a professor here named Dr. Bill Malloy, and he was an expert on Easter Island and the statue, where, and he was a friend of Thor Heyerdahl, and he was a fascinating man, wonderful lecture, and great to go talk to. So those are some of the memories I have of, of uh, UW. I, uh, I graduated, as I said, in 66, and I went into the Peace Corps for a short time, I went to the training, and I had a problem with the language. I was struggling with the language. So I decided it really wasn't for me. So I came back, and came back to Wyoming, started working, trying to put some money together to uh, go uh, pursue a master's degree. Well, I was in a small town, 3,500 to be exact, and I was number one on the draft list. Understand the time frame here, 1968. So I uh, decided that I would volunteer for the Navy. And I was very fortunate to be accepted uh, Naval Officer Candidate School with an emphasis in intelligence. And I went to Pensacola, Florida, and I spent a number of months there, Denver, Colorado, for intelligence school. 18 months later, I ended up being assigned to a reconnaissance squadron at Miramar, which is San Diego, California. Fortuitously for me, I met my wife the second day there. Best thing ever happened to me. And um, loved the weather, loved her, decided to stay. So I got out of the Navy, got off active duty, uh, got in the insurance business. I started interviewing. Had a, turns out I had a certain proclivity for sales. And uh, through some testing and interviewing, I, I got a job in the insurance business. Uh, next month will be 43 years I've been in the business. So it's been a very fascinating career for me. But at the same time, on a parallel track, as soon as I got in the insurance business, I got in the Navy Reserve. And I was able to pursue my intelligence career 
to the reserve one weekend a month and was able to do a fair amount of traveling. Now, when I was on active duty before I got in the reserves, I was able to go, I was uh, assigned to an aircraft carrier and we were off Vietnam for nine months. Went to Vietnam, went to, to uh, Hong Kong, went to the Philippines and went to Japan. So got a flavor for the Orient and that was fascinating and learned how people lived on the other side of the world. That was a very interesting dynamic for me. So at any rate, uh, getting back to my uh, career, um, I was able to, in the Navy Reserve, have the good fortune to uh, have four different commands uh, during my time um, as a reserve intelligence officer. And I ended up number two in, the, in Southern California, senior intelligence officer, in four different commands and retired as a captain in 1993. So the people I met, the experiences I had, the travel I did, went to Korea, did a two-week duty into Korea, got a fascinating insight into the Korean people and how hard they work. And it was very apparent that they were going to make a major splice economically in the world at that time. This was back in the 80s. So it was a fascinating t time to be in the Navy Reserve. Uh, my experience in the, in the insurance industry has enabled me to meet all kinds of different people from many and varied backgrounds. It tremendously enriched my life, the experiences I've had, the travels I've done, the cities I've visited, and the kind of people that I've met. As we were uh, working to pursue um, what was best for our clients. I uh, was able to continue my education in the insurance field as well. And I have three different credentials, the Chartered Life Underwriter, the Ch Chartered Financial Consultant, and the Chartered Advisor in Philanthropy. I was also able to uh, experience leadership opportunities in the insurance business. And uh, during the time I've been in the business, I was fortunate enough to become the president of the San Diego Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors as well as the California insurance, uh, president of the California Association as well. It was a 9,600 member organization. So it took a lot of time. It was a challenge, but like anything in leadership, if you put a lot of effort into it, you get tenfold back what you put into to your leadership. So uh, I was very fortunate. Um, in the last 20 years, my wife and I have been very blessed to have had the opportunity to go to Europe a number of times. And in 2008, we did a family trip where we went back to trace our roots. My grandfather came from a small town in the Black Forest area in southern Germany. And we have two cousins that live there. And we got an opportunity to spend time talking with the cousins, getting a sense of what it was like to be in Germany during the war. We went to cemeteries, visited that kind of thing. It was fascinating. We loved, we loved being in Germany. It was very, very interesting. We. Uh, my wife and I uh, also um, sp spent time this past year at, at Normandy. Got to see Omaha Beach in a Royal Marine, 33-year uh, uh, Royal Marine colonel actually guided us at Normandy. It was absolutely fascinating. And we had the opportunity to, to look out across that vast expanse of white crosses and realize the sacrifice that so many young men and women made and the other thing that we did that was so special is the colonel arranged for us to be able to, when the flags were lowered at, at dusk, we got the opportunity to, to fold the American flags as they played taps. It was just something I'll never forget. So that visiting Europe again was just, just special. In the nonprofit side, I've been involved in two organizations. One, Fresh Start Surgical Gifts, which does free surgeries on children with birth defects, with cleft palates and hearing nevuses and some pretty horrendous things. Many of these children are from Mexico and other countries as well as the U.S. And I uh, was on that board for a number of years and this is all free surgery. This organization absolutely changes lives. The other uh, organization that my wife and I founded um, in 1997, tragically, our daughter Amy at age 14 took her life. And in the aftermath of that, we created a chapter of an organization called the Light for Life Foundation. And our quest is to teach kids that it's okay to ask for help. And we give out a little business card to kids. We do programs for junior high and high school kids. And we've done uh, programs for 290,000 kids over the last 17 years. And we've given out 900,000 cards over that period of time. And there's over 3,000 lives that have been saved by our program internationally. We're just a local chapter, but 
we've been very involved in, in the suicide prevention business. So in my experience, it's been wide and varying, as you can see. Um, better enabled me to understand the world, and uh, it's given me the opportunity to appreciate how quickly events change, and as we heard from Dr. Selman yesterday, we saw what's going on in Crimea and all that, and whether and it's happening instantaneously, whether it's happening on your, you're seeing it on your iPhone, your iPad, on television, it's, it's amazing, the transformation of, our, of our, um, our world. By the way, a contrast, when I was a student, we actually used typewriters. I realize that's a shock. Many, many of you may not know what a typewriter is, and we didn't have the benefit of the World Wide Web to research our papers. But most importantly, I would trade nothing for my experience of being here at the university. And, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And hopefully you can see by my ex experience that a degree in global studies can lead you in a direction that you perhaps never dreamed was possible. Since the world has grown so small, relatively speaking, and because of the World Wide Web and other technologies, a degree which enables you to appreciate the global world of the 21st century can be invaluable no matter what you ultimately decide to pursue. Thank you very much. OK. Um, so my name is Garrett Sheiky. Um, and Gene requested that we answer a few questions. And I'm going to try to do it as uh, concisely as possible. And one was, how did the University of Wyoming prepare me for my global career of where I'm at? And then, what um, have I gained from international work? So my background, just a little bit. I'm from Buffalo, Wyoming. I think by pure circumstance as well. I didn't know it was such an in international little town um, in Wyoming. Um, so I grew up in Buffalo. I came down here and did my undergrad here at the University of Wyoming. I graduated with a degree in Spanish and international studies in 2004. Um, I did my master's degree at the University of Denver, um, did the master's international program with Peace Corps, ended up in Thailand. Um, I worked with the Red Cross on their tsunami recovery program in southern Thailand after I got done with Peace Corps. I worked in Afghanistan and Pakistan with Catholic Relief Services managing an emergency program. And now I'm currently with Lutheran World Relief um, working in their monitoring and evaluation unit. So that's briefly my background. Um, so I was thinking, um, uh, you know, how did, how did I get here? How did a, how did a boy from Buffalo, Wyoming um, end up here? Um, I was speaking with Mark Wall at uh, dinner last night, and I started saying this, and he says, where are you from? And I said, Buffalo. He says, oh, OK. And I said, Buffalo, Wyoming. He said, oh. <laughs> so um, you know, how did a boy from Buffalo, Wyoming end up um, having these experiences? And I think um, you know, I had a lot of unique opportunities. Um, there was a lot of people who cared, which got me to this place, and also a little bit of dumb luck, I think. Um, so when I was here at the University of Wyoming, I, I, I look back on it and I kind of contrast it with you know, experiences that some of my friends had um, that went to other uh, schools and, and majored in international studies. And I think one of the great things about the University of Wyoming is that it's intimate, it's small, people care. Um, you have access to your, to your professors. Um, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for people like Garth Massey or, um, or other people who, who, who kind of pushed me along. I was a listless 19-year-old who didn't really know where he wanted to go, knew that he liked international stuff, but, but wasn't sure where that would take him. Um, so I was able to, you know, I could go to any of my professors and, you know, and really have a relationship with them and, uh, and, and get some good advice from them. My parents didn't know what international work meant. Um, so I needed to get that from someplace. And I feel like if I was at a bigger university and I was a small fish in a big pond, that I probably wouldn't have gotten that. So I think uh, University of Wyoming really helped me out with that. Um, the opportunity. Um, while I was here, there's, there's such a small core, I think, of, of people in particular at that time who were taking advantage of the opportunities that the University of Wyoming offered, like study abroad programs, um, international research grants, and luckily from guidance from um, professor and faculty here, I was able to do that. And so I, uh, I studied abroad in Guatemala in my junior year. Um, I was taking a course. Um, of Latin American history. I didn't speak much Spanish, and they said, oh, there's this opportunity. There was a guy named Tom Struck, who was a former ambassador to Guatemala. He started a scholarship for students to go study in Guatemala. And I said, well, I, why don't I do that? I applied, and a couple of months later, I was walking down streets in Guata Antigua, Guatemala, and asking myself, what the heck did I get myself into? <laughs> um, so that was a little bit of the dumb luck. Um, but that opportunity you know, kind of put me on the path of, of where I'm at now. I, I met Peace Corps volunteers. I, I got to understand what international development was and, and thought that it was something that was worthy and that I wanted to do. Um, after I got back, um, I applied for, uh, they have, I'm not sure if they still have them, Gene, but they have uh, 
Independent Summer Research Awards. Um, and I got an independent summer research award from the College of Arts and Sciences and was able to use that to do um, work on the effects of tourism on, on protected natural areas and I did that in Lake Titicaca in, uh, in Peru. So once again, another huge opportunity that gave me a very good perspective of the world and, uh, and of the sector that I eventually ended up working in. Um, so what have I gained from my international work? Um, you know, I think everyone knows the importance of international work in the 21st century. Everything is, is, is globally entwined. You can't live in Wyoming without being affected somehow by, by the events and, and, uh, and happenings of, of, of around the world. Um, what did I gain from it? Um, you know, I think one of the biggest things that I gained was the ability to empathize. Um, I think when you come from Wyoming, you, 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 you're from a very close, you know, you're from a very small kind of world. You know, there aren't a whole lot of minorities, you don't get a lot of exposure. Um, and I think there's a tendency to, to view people as being fundamentally different rather than fundamentally the same. And throughout my work being in Peace Corps and, and being able to interact with a lot of people on a, on a very intimate level, I really came to the understanding that, that people have the same concerns, um, that people are fundamentally the same. Um, and, and be able to empathize or empathize with people on that level, and not only from people with different cultures, but in between people from your own, from, from Wyoming, or just understanding what their motivations are, and that people's fundamental motivations are, are, are pretty much the same. And I think that's one great thing that I gained from that. Um, and it helped me in my work context. I remember I took a, I had to take a course in graduate school. It's called Group and Organizational Dynamics. And I didn't really like it. I thought it was too qualitative, um, it was too contextual, um, I didn't want to take it, and so I got out of the second course that I had to do and I took more project management, which I thought were skills that, that, that would be useful, and ultimately they were. I wrote the professor that I got out of that course from, um, I think last year, and I told him, you know, you may not remember me, but I got out of your second course and I think that was the worst mistake I've ever made. <laughs> because, um, you know, understanding, being able to empathize with people and working in a context, you can have all of the knowledge in the world, but if you can't work with people to make something of that knowledge, then it's, then it's worthless. So I think that was a big thing that I gained from all of my experience. That's it. All right, good morning. As Dr. Garrison mentioned, I'm Danae Hunzi, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the University of Wyoming. And as you've read in the bios, I did graduate um, with an International Studies and Political Science degree here in 2010. And the opportunities that have come from that, that experience have been pretty endless. And so I kind of want to talk about um, how I ended up where I am today, because I think it was a very different track than most people. Um, when I picked International Studies, I went from pre-med biology to International Studies, and my parents pulled their hair out, told me I was giving them gray hair, um, that I was never going to get a job. And I thought, you know what? That's what I love to do, so I'm going to do it. So I did it. And that was the best decision. I think it was the first time I really made a decision for myself um, and what I really enjoyed doing. Um, so I was a transfer student to the University of Wyoming from Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. Um, I'm from Kemmer, Wyoming, home of the first J.C. Penney's, you know, small town girl that wanted to get out of Wyoming. I wanted out. And I don't, are there any Wyoming s students in the in the, in the room? Okay, did any of you have those feelings when you were a senior? Okay, so some of you and some of you do not. And when I transferred back to Wyoming, I thought the world was going to end. And little did I know it ended up being one of the best things that happened to me. Um, because the opportunities, the faculty here, they're first class. It doesn't get much better. Um, and you have access to those opportunities because it is small in size, as Garrett mentioned. Um, so I got here, I enrolled in international studies, and I actually took a class with Dr. Zare, so I'm excited to see she's in the room. Um, it was called Women in India, and that was the first class that really made an impact on me, where I loved to go to class every day, I enjoyed learning, and that Christmas I got to go to India and see firsthand all of those things that I had been learning about, female infanticide, um, daughter devaluation, all of these things that I think as a Wyoming girl was really hard for me to wrap my mind around until I was able to see it. And from there, it just kind of grew. I went to Brussels with Dr. Anderson. Um, I was able to go to Korea in the summer through the Borman International Program. I'm very lucky that the President's Office sponsored me to go and have those experiences. Um, but what I learned from that was that, 
your passion can take you a long ways. So even though my parents didn't think I would get a job, it did, I was able to get a job. So I moved home to my parents' basement when I graduated. There was a nice article in the Laramie Boomerang about it. Um, so if you wanna go read it, you can learn about me moving back to Kemmer in the basement. Um, Vice President Axelson thought that was awesome and that it should go in the newspaper. So I moved home and about a month later, I got a phone call from the University of Wyoming Admissions Office offering me a job. So I signed up as a domestic recruiter, which meant I was traveling around Wyoming, Montana, Nebraska, Alaska was pretty exciting. Um, and that was awesome because I was promoting something that I really believe in, and that's the University of Wyoming. Um, and to share that with prospective students, families, meet alumni, that's a pretty incredible opportunity. Um, so in a few months later, the old person who used to travel in my job got pregnant, and that was also the next best thing that happened to me, <laughs> because that meant she couldn't get on an airplane and fly out of the country. So I got picked to go because I was the only one with a passport, and that's why it's an, an important thing as a student. I'm being honest with you all. Um, that is why. But as a student, all of those travel opportunities that exist, I mean, there's scholarships to send you abroad. Take advantage of those, because taking advantage of those is what opened the door for me to make a career out of it. So being able to experience different cultures as a student and understand those cultures is what allowed me to be successful in my position now. So I moved into the assistant director position that oversees international enrollment for the University of Wyoming. So I spend about four months out of the year traveling abroad, um, and I love it. I get to go back to India almost every year, which is really where my passion started, so that's pretty incredible. Um, and so my advice to you guys when you're looking for jobs is, something will happen, but don't be afraid to go for it. Don't be afraid to take a chance. Um, if you're really passionate about it and you can put your heart into it, you're going to be successful. Um, and then also, take advantage of the opportunities here. Um, coming from a university where you're paying $50,000 in tuition and fees to coming to a university where you're not, especially if you're an in-state student. Both were great experiences, I love them both, but those opportunities are here too. You have scholarships, you have faculty here. Um, I mean, Dr. Zare, Dr. Garrison, Dr. Anderson, those are some of the top professors in the world. You know, talk to them, network with them. Um, they will help you make those connections when you graduate so that the doors will open for you. Um, let's see. The only other thing I wanted to mention, what I, which I, I am so glad about this program about Wyoming Goes Global, is as much as I get to travel, I have a free-spirited heart, so I do really enjoy being able to go. Um, but I also always will remember that Kemmer is my hometown and Wyoming's my home state, regardless of where I go. So when I travel, um, do you guys remember the game Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Anybody? No? That was my favorite game. So my parents are teachers back in Kemmer. They teach third grade and fifth grade. And then I also have a sorority sister in Riverton, Wyoming, who teaches third grade. So we do Where in the World is Danae Hunzi. And I Skype call back with those students at each country that I go to and give them three clues. And they're able to do research. They're able to geographically locate where I am in the world, what the time difference is. Um, what food I'm eating there. And I think that for me, that's the most rewarding part of my trip is bringing that international experience back to Wyoming and making sure that they have that, that seed planted, that we are a global society and we are connected and that there shouldn't be a fear of difference, that we're all the same at the end of the day. And so being able to bring that global experience back to Wyoming has been the greatest part of my education. Good morning. Um, my name's Janine Jordan, and I'm the city manager here in Laramie, Wyoming. And um, it's really an honor to be here with this group and with this panel, and I appreciate Dr. Garrison asking me. Um, what, of course, is notably different from my um, current situation, as opposed to these folks, is I'm not working in an international capacity. But I want to talk a little bit to you about my journey. Um, I also am from Wyoming. I'm a Casper native. And I spent a lot of time as an undergraduate trying to figure out what I wanted to be. Danae and I have a 
a similar story. I was pre-vet <laughs> microbiology when I switched to international studies. Um, didn't cause my parents, it sounds like, quite as much consternation because they knew I was a little out there anyway. That was about my fourth major. Um, <laughs> but in any case, I ultimately did um, uh, receive my bachelor's degree in international studies. And I have to say one of the prior panelists kind of stole some of my thunder because one of the things that has really occurred to me as my career has developed is that people are people. And it doesn't matter if people are people in Laramie or in Casper or in India or in Southeast Asia. People are people and their concerns and issues are the same. Um, when I actually decided that with my bachelor's degree, I wanted to pursue a master's degree with a more practical application um, as far as management intensive and finance intensive sort of uh, um, expertise, I decided to go back for my master's in public administration. And ultimately, when I started my master's program, my, I guess, expectation is that I would probably be working at the federal level. Um, hopefully in an area that had uh, a juxtaposition with that international uh, background that I had. And while in graduate school, I approached the city of Laramie and you know, said, hey, I'd like to be an intern. And what I realized as I started um, trying to gather that practical experience along with my master's degree education was that people are people. Um, I'd been focused on international economic development, specifically as an undergraduate, and what strikes me about Wyoming is we're not a lot different than many, you know, third and second world kinds of uh, economies. We have natural resource, heavy and extractive industry, very comparable to many of the parts of the country that you focus on as a, an international studies major and talk about how you help them develop that economy, diversify the economy, and develop basic infrastructure, you know, water, sanitation, those kinds of things. So when you look at it at a local level, um, really the issues are very much the same. F we're fortunate enough to have uh, the ready access to clean water and to uh, sanitary services and those kinds of things. Um, so we have that infrastructure in place, but I'll tell you, as a city manager, it's no simple task keeping it that way. <laughs> and it's a very expensive task as well. And so you spend a lot of time doing exactly what I talked about and, and dreamed about at certain points in my uh, young life doing in foreign countries, which is making sure that you can keep those systems up and not now, but in a sustainable fashion into the long term for future generations. So this, the issues are very much the same. Um, one of the questions I want to talk about is what did I gain? Um, as I said, I had a number of majors, uh, ultimately with my degree being in international studies. But what I gained was an appreciation for the human experience. And I think it makes me as a public servant better at what I do. I'm a better manager with my staff. They are uh, I'm more able to relate to their issues and concerns, whether it's a gender issue, whether it's uh, dealing with your family and how you care for your children when you're a single parent. Um, and I'm also, I hope, more receptive to the issues that my community has and the understanding that everybody has a particular constituency or a particular issue and that we bring those to the table and we work together to solve them and to find the best outcome that's the best outcome for all of our people in the community. Usually that's a compromise, so everybody walks away a little bit unhappy, but in the end it's the best solution from a public standpoint. And when we focus on issues of sustainability, and this is kind of a, an issue that's specific to my heart, uh, I don't know that American uh, local governments specifically focus on sustainability. There's an expectation that those systems are built and that they will maintain themselves almost in perpetuity. And I think um, that's not necessarily the case. So it's a big issue to um, take into account sustainability when we take for granted what we have and we assume it will always be there for future generations. Thank you. So I, I forced our panelists to be short so that you could ask questions. So we have about 20 minutes for questions and you, if you want to probe some people a little bit more about what, they're, what they've been doing in their in specific careers rather than simply their paths to those careers, uh, the floor is open. And we're, we are going to, uh, we will bring the mic to you. My name is Steve Walker and I teach uh, international studies at Northwest College. I'm here kind of for my students because I always get the question, what can I do with this degree? And it's, it's a really difficult 
question to answer. If you go into engineering, you have a specific kind of path. If you go into mathematics, you have a path. But international studies is, is different. So, you know, your diverse paths that you've taken kind of show some of this. So, I guess if, if you were in my, if you were in my boat, how would you answer that question to students? How would I answer that? And say what you've done on research. Yeah, so, um, so I work with international nonprofits, <laughs> international development, which I think is a, is, is a, is a very big field that um, I wasn't aware of being in Wyoming. Um, it's, it's, it's actually a huge industry when you look at the United States Agency for International Development and the billions of dollars that they invest abroad. There are opportunities with USAID. Um, there are opportunities with uh, international nonprofits, NGOs that, that get funding from USAID. Um, that's a huge, huge opportunity, and those opportunities are, are as much in the field um, working abroad as, as, as well as um, working with uh, nonprofits here in the United States, and that includes, um, you know, they're all over the country. Of course, most of them are, are based around the D.C. Um, area because they're affiliated, you know, because they, they, they want to influence the government because obviously the U.S. government is, is the largest international aid donor in, in the world, and so the way that they make their decisions really influences um, the rest of the work that everyone else is doing. Um, that's also linked to the State Department. The State Department does um, a lot of projects internationally. I know um, there are many Foreign Service um, officers that, uh, that well, Mark Wall was one of them. I, there's, there's many people, I think, that are in international studies that go into the Foreign Service with the State Department. Um, you know, when I was going through it, I, I thought international business, you know, um, this very kind of a broad definition of saying, okay, well, maybe I'll go into international business. I didn't really know what that meant. Um, and, and, and I just kind of, by dumb luck, got into this field and found that, that this is actually a very, very interesting field and there's a lot of opportunity there. So I think that's one thing that I would tell them. Um, but as you see with this panel, I think that it takes you in a lot of different directions. And I think, you know, we were discussing about just, just pursuing the opportunities that you have and seeing that where that will take you. Um, and then also keeping in touch with people. Um, you know, my mom always says, uh, you know, a big part of being successful is about knowing people, not necessarily about knowing things. Um, so keeping in touch with people and, and, and getting those networks, and, and, and that helps you to, to, to deepen your understanding of what options there are out there, because they are myriad, really. I don't think I could say anything to, to one. Um, anybody else? I, th I think, uh, as you saw from, from my background, uh, it, I took a, a big turn and really the you know, war changed my life. But the fact remains, I used my background in, in, in my career in the Navy. And we were you know, dealing in the Cold War issues and all that kind of thing. So I feel like uh, it was a tremendous background. And I, candidly, uh, your mother and my mother are a lot alike. Um, my mother was a school teacher, and uh, bless her heart. And, she said, Terry, you'll never get a job. So I switched to business. And after a year, I hated it. I just hated business. I took accounting and all those courses. So then I switched back to international affairs. I said, Mother, I don't care if I'm digging ditch. I'm not going to major in business. So I had to really hustle to get out in four years. But what did I do? I ended up in business. But the, that's the other irony of my story. But the fact remains <clears throat> that you can really do a lot, I think, with a degree because it gives you a broad perspective on the world. And we are so global, as this program is so aptly named now, that, you know, whatever you do gets transmitted around the world instantaneously. So the opportunities that, that, that globalization pr presents to you uh, and the fact that you're aware of them because you're in a program like this, uh, I think speaks to why this program is important, why you should be in it. And um, I just think there's, as Garrett said, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity out there. You just have to go pursue it and, and look, for, look for the opportunity. And, and don't close your mind to thinking that, well, just because this is not what I start out to do, that this may not be a, a, a great opportunity for me. Because it, you never know until you're in that situation whether it's going to be a great opportunity or not. So just the opportunity to, to look at the broad spectrum of, of things that are going on in the world and uh, pursue whatever, whatever is your passion, whatever drives you, I think is, is huge. And this background 
is tremendous for that, as far as I'm concerned. Um, don't be afraid not to know what you want to do. <laughs> um, I, I guess I'm the example of the one who does international affairs who becomes a professor. So there's your other path. Uh, but while we're waiting for maybe somebody will raise their hand for another question, but I'll just say that uh, of the 30 who graduated in the, the in the May in May of last year, 25% went on to graduate studies. Um, these are people who had funding to go into graduate studies. Anything from Arabic studies at Georgetown to Islamic studies at um, Emory to Forest Street, Washington State. That's the variety we have coming out of it. You can, you can go into economics or environment, natural resources or traditional international affairs. One's working for T. Rowe Price. One is a webmaster. Four are in the military, commissioned officers in the military. One has gone into the police, <laughs> is part of the police services. I'm not sure where, honestly. Uh, one had a Peace Corps posting. Uh, four went into teaching. That's something people underestimate. If you're interested in teaching, think about it up front rather than on the back end. You can always get a master's in teaching. And then there are several of the last several years that have gone into what kind of work Diné does. There's kind of international programming, sorts of opportunities in universities. That's actually kind of a very useful first step for some people. Um, and then about 25% weren't sure. They said foreign service, grad school, but you know, kind of in that, I'm going to go work at Starbucks, go to my basement zone. <laughs> Uh, other questions? As an undergraduate, how could we, what, could, what steps can we take to kind of ensure some kind of job security or kind of direct us onto a path of a career so we can assure our parents a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Janine or, or Danae? I'd love to answer that. Um, you know, I think what you do is you find what inspires you, what intrigues you. Um, Danae mentioned that class, and I think we've all had those classes, um, or maybe many classes. Um, but you do what you love, and you do what is interesting to you, and it will find an open doors for you. I, I fully believe that, and I think Dr. Garrison's right. Don't be afraid not to know. Just always stay open to the possibilities. And that's the great thing about an international studies degree. It's broad-based. It's liberal arts. You, you're going to come away from this program with a more well-rounded education than I don't tell. Are there any engineers in the room? <laughs> OK. You all tell on us, right? <laughs> but, but you know, no offense. I work with many, many engineers every day. And they're an interesting uh, group. And they're very necessary folks. And they have a clear path when they come out with their degree. Your path is perhaps broader and less clear and sometimes a little bit scarier, probably. But the possibilities are endless. My question, you know, my answer to the question, what can you do with this degree, is what can't you do? You can do whatever you want. Do what inspires you. Do, what, do what's interesting. Um, my question is actually for Janine. And uh, focusing on your passion for sustainability, I was just curious how, um, I guess, how you use your international studies, uh, your undergraduate degree, and through your graduate degree, and your passion to look at the city of Laramie um, in terms of how you look at things abroad. And if you ever focused on research abroad and have different cultures use different systems to focus on how we can maybe change our systems and make them more sustainable? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and I apologize, I got off. I was supposed to be talking about how I got to this place in my life, and I got off on one of my soapbox issues, so I apologize. But that is a sustainability issue for me. And, and I do believe that as Americans, or as you know, first world people, whatever we want to call ourselves, we take for granted what we have. And we aren't always planning for that sustainability into the future, because we take it for granted. We have it. And, and so we're not building in sustainability on the front end. We've inherited systems that sometimes often aren't sustainable as an engineer. I'm sure you know that, or as an aspiring engineer. Um, so to your question of how do I uh, incorporate international studies into what I do now, well, first of all, the City and County Management Association is an international association. And one of my focuses in this, you know, I've been a city manager now since 2007, so I'm green as it goes. Um, but I've tried to focus a lot of my efforts in making sure that I make it to that conference annually, and then I use that conference as an opportunity to look at the international concepts that we can bring to the table um, and perhaps parlay into uh, ways to 
look at where maybe in India they've built in sustainability initiatives into the front end of building an infrastructure system. How do we then retrofit our infrastructure systems to have those kinds of sustainability aspects, whether it's solar, whether it's wind, whatever, you know, whatever it may be, energy source, whatever. Um, I will say also one of the things I look for, this is probably my bias and, and I'm right in the thick of this right now because I'm actually hiring in my office. But I look for folks who recognize that s local government management is s the same everywhere because people are the same. And so we do, uh, you know, I look for people who bring that to the table, who look at comparative policy analysis across international uh, venues and not just look at, you know, well, what does the Front Range of Colorado do? That's easy, right? That's the easy way to do it. But if we're looking at what's going on in Europe and we're looking at more maybe progressive or cutting edge parts of the world, sometimes we can take those ideas and bring them in locally and that can be a really positive thing. Garth. Wait, wait, please, sec. wait for the mic. Do I need it? Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, I want to address a question to Danae and, and Janine. Um, you, one could look at your careers and say, to some degree, you're either skills building right now or you're sidetracked. Can you imagine taking the skills that you have, because you know they're applicable all over the world, and there are many people that need the skills you have, and taking them more internationally? Well, that is a great question. Um, I do think so. Um, through my travels, I'm able to meet with a lot of students all around the world. And with that comes alumni. Um, we visit embassies in the countries, um, different things like that, working with Education USA, which is a US State Department um, program to promote higher education in the US for international students. And actually, when I travel, that often comes up. Would you like to come work in Saudi Arabia in the US um, USA, US Ed office, or would you be interested in this? So I do think, I see my job as a constant opportunity for networking. Um, I'm traveling with not only recruiters from all across the US, but I'm also meeting with dignitaries from foreign countries as I'm traveling. And every time I meet with them, it's a time to present myself as a professional and to see that that could be another opportunity in my career. And I think that's something that we all mentioned is don't be afraid to push those doors, the doors open. It doesn't mean that you have to walk through that door, you know, but it doesn't hurt to put them open. So when I am looking for a career change. Um, right now, I'm still working on the skill set. That is what I see me doing right now, is I'm trying to get the skills needed to be successful. And we talk about, oh, you know, you're not sure what you want to do. I don't know if you, we ever actually know what we 100% want to do. Um, I think that we have these ideas and there's something that make us happy, but that can change over time as you gain experiences. And that's where I'm at right now, is trying to figure out what that next step is. And the skill set that I got from here, you know, that I am learning in my current position will help open those doors. So I do, I see it as a skill set learning opportunity, but I also see it as a networking opportunity for that next position. Um, Dr. Massey, that's a great question. And um, I, I would say, I don't feel sidetracked right now. I feel like I'm working in the international community. No different, um, because we're part of that. And you know, Laramie is the home. We're so lucky to be the home of the University of Wyoming. Um, we have markedly different um, look to our community than other Wyoming communities. Um, I'd say we're the most international of all Wyoming communities, but I won't tell any of my colleagues that I said that. Um, in any case, um, I, do I do think often about exporting um, what I do to um, a properly international position. And you know, I'm, I'm raising my children right now, and when I get them here at the University of Wyoming, then I get to go out and maybe um, do some of the work that I do now only outside of the country or elsewhere. So. Yeah, I, I don't see the possibilities as ending, and uh, I think that's one of the great things about this degree. You can grow with it, and it can grow with you. Maybe Garrett wants to note that what she's really saying is life happens. <laughs> and you have 50 years to think about what you want to do, so don't be afraid of, I mean, life happens in the case of two kids and a marriage, but I've visited with Janine about this, and I know that she's talked about maybe doing something gets back toward, I mean, at, think about it, a comparative ability for her to take her skill set at that point in her life overseas. Think about the positioning she'll have for that job versus where maybe Garrett started. But, but if you would talk a little bit about your hopping, you've hopped on four different, you kind of had a. Yeah, so I've kind of been all over and I wanted to address that from, from kind of the opposite perspective. What, what skills did I learn internationally that I've, that I've actually been excited about taking back here to the US? Um, 
you know, the sustainability issue, I think, is, is fascinating. You know, in, in all of our projects, you know, the buzzword is sustainability. You know, if you do, if you put in a, a water system or, or a solar system, you know, the international humanitarian assistance sector, you know, has really moved from saying, we're not just going to give you something, we're going to give you the skills and the knowledge to, to, to make sure that those things are sustainable in the future. So we don't just set up a solar system. We set up a solar system and we say, here's how you maintain it. Here's how you set up a, a cost structure that, that, that's feasible for the communities to pay, but also is enough to, you know, to make repairs and, you know, and, and continue a sustainable system. So. <laughs> when you think about it, local government, so I just got elected as a treasurer for uh, our local neighborhood association in Baltimore. Um, so how do I take the skills and the knowledge that I've learned for project management, for understanding how to take these various parts of, 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 of kind of a social context within a, you know, within any community and, and, make, a, and make a coherent whole out of it and make, make, make something good happen in your own neighborhood. And I think it's been exciting for me because I've always dedicated my whole life to helping people abroad. Now I have the opportunity to come back and say, hey, I can actually do something here in the US that will give me as much um, kind of satisfaction as, as, as doing it abroad. Um, so when you, when you jump around, as I have, obviously, um, I think that it, it allows you to, to, to get you know, a, a lot of different um, experiences from, from different places. And, you know, and when you get that general international studies background. I think it, it helps you understand things, the diverse parts and put it into a, to a holistic kind of perspective. And I think that's, that's really important. So you can grab the things that you learn from here and from there and make something you know, useful out of it, which I think that if you're too focused on one specific area that it's not always that easy to, to make a coherent whole out of, out of the diverse parts. Alyssa, we had a question right here. Ali. Terry, did you want to add anything, Terry, while we're well, I, just, I think I kind of probably repeating myself here, but I just think that the opportunities are really unlimited, and just open your mind to what what's out there. I mean, uh, this panel I think is indicative of the diversity of kind of jobs that you can uh, find yourself in, and and uh, I think that the, having a passion for whatever it is that really drives you is is the key to to anything you do in life. If you have a passion for it, you're going to put your entire being into it. And that's, that's the key to making it work. And that will sustain you when things may not, may not go as well as you'd like. But that passion will, will keep you going until you perhaps find something else that, that better satisfies you. But uh, it's, all, it's all about the passion for, for whatever it is that is, is really your, your goal in life and what, what drives you. Last question. Okay, my name is Ali Radawi. I'm director of the Arabic program here at this university. And my question is really about program building. We are in the process now or inaugurating the Global uh, Studies Center. And this is international studies program. I'd like to ask you if there are suggestions you'd like to make for the Global and Area Studies program or for the uh, a Global Studies Center, things that you think would also serve you more in the future. Thank you. grab it. <laughs> um, you know, I was, I was speaking with Gene a little bit after this, and you know, and, and it's a little bit of, um, of, of kind of publicizing, you know, what we're doing as well. But I think linking, you know, University of Wyoming, one, so I thought about, you know, what were the advantages of going to the University of Wyoming versus what were the disadvantages? I think that, um, you know, it, when I was here, you know, UW had good programs, but it didn't really have those connections to, you know, the big international, you know, the, the think tanks, the, you know, the international development um, field and things like that. And I think, you know, having a holistic perspective and understanding, which what is Gene is trying to do is saying, you know, multidisciplinary, you know, each one of the colleges is, you know, is, is figuring out how do we fit into this global, global system, which I think is great. I think there's lots of opportunities, I was telling Gene, um, we're looking, there's a lot of, of partnerships for research, for internships, um, making those, so if you can link with, you know, with some of these global centers around DC, around, you know, within the US, even San Francisco or Seattle that are looking Asia, you know, looking towards Asia or looking, you know, worldwide, that, that it'll serve students, it'll give students here um, great opportunities. And you talk about, you know, how do you get into, um, how do you make sure your parents, uh, you, you, you prove your parents wrong when, when you say you get a job. Well, a lot of that's about internships, it's about knowing people, it's about 
linking up to to alumni you know I would be more than happy to you know to work with uh, work with Gene and, and say hey can we get interns here from Wyoming um, can we work with uh, graduate students because I know University of Wyoming is in a is in a very um, good position because they have such such support from the Wyoming state government in, in terms of financial resources and a dedication to this right now. How can we do research? How can I get a graduate student in some of our projects to do research on the evaluation of of our projects of uh, you know or of applied research when we're doing when we're trying to figure out what climate change adaptation means to local farmers in uh, in, in Indonesia or something like that. So I think making those linkages um, and, and taking advantage of, of the alumni network work that, that is out there, but is maybe a little bit difficult to, to find. Well, that's kind of the next task. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't Any know. Other final thoughts? Go ahead. Well, that's actually what I wrote down was an alumni mentor program. Mm -hmm. um, we have some incredible alumni scattered all throughout the world. Um, when I travel, I'm constantly amazed. I'll put the UW banner out, and out of the woodworks will come all of these alumni that we didn't even know about. Um, one of the former VPs of Petrona Oil is an alumni of the University of Wyoming. A large CEO in Saudi Arabia is an alumni of um, the University of Wyoming. And I am fortunate enough that I get to meet these people when I travel. But the constant theme is when I, dis when I meet these people is they want to give back to UW. They want to give back to the students here and in any way that's possible. So whether it's through an internship or mentoring them, helping them connect, um, that networking that Dr. Massey mentioned is key. And so I think something in the um, Global Studies Center that connects current students with alumni in the same areas of study would be very beneficial. And uh, you know, it's funny because I'm only a small microcosm, our, our students and faculty, but we've got about a thousand to find out of international studies over the years. But I think that Keener Fry and I think the Alumni Association are well aware of this because I want to link to the ones who are in those business positions as well because we need to be looking for nonprofits, government work, and other options. So I see um, a link, you know, LinkedIn as a great tool for that. So uh, we're going to start that. And, uh, but I think as a university, we can really we can do more. So that's a great suggestion. I want to thank you all. Um, we have another panel in seven minutes focusing on careers. I have to read it here. Careers in the public and private sector, business and government focus. So please come back in seven minutes. We'll start on the, on the dot. Please help me thank our panelists.